the Avada fits a spot in a videographer's toolbox that was missing before where it's like you like risky stuff, you don't like consequences, you want to get the shot but don't want to crash an expensive drone. Much faster, way crazier, more sporty option. Pause the screen if you want to look at the specs, I'm not doing this for two hours. First thing I noticed stepping into FPV world, and this is unique to the Avada, way, way less stress. And it, it's like being in a bouncy house, I mean within reason, it's not indestructible, but it's way more forgiving and less stress than like a Mavic or a Mini. So I found out really quickly with my first big screw up and panic that I still have a lot of anxiety from the Mavic. And I'm thinking if I crash, it's the drone's like, hold on, whoa, you messed up. You can't calibrate the compass. We're calling China, you can't do this. You're gonna break a propeller. There's no way to avoid that. It might fall out the sky, set on fire and like land on a crippled puppy or something. This thing wipes out, rolls five times and it's like, no balls, you won't do it again, nerd. Super weird transitioning from all that anxiety to realizing it's just kind of normal to, to make a mistake and like bump into things. Well, at least when you have this drone with the guards on it. No way I would ever send my Mavic by like some cars or the side of a building or like the tree branches in winter, the little tiny ones you can't see. So the drone equivalent of an action camera means its job isn't to get the most complicated cinematic picture in the world. It just needs to be good enough that you will actually use it. It's 4K, 60 frames a second. And for the type of footage, it does a much better job than you thought it would. I'm making this video in 60 frames a second because you need to see what I'm talking about. It's not the same taking 60 frames down to 24 frames a second. So that's why it looks a lot crisper. The risky situations that you used to be able to avoid um, are kind of starting to disappear now because everybody's got somebody who asks you to film something like, oh, I'm riding my dirt bike through the forest. Will you come and film this and I'll pay you to do it? First of all, how dare you speak to me directly? Second of all, no, there's trees everywhere. It's gonna get dirty. How fast are you going? I can't keep up. And if I do, I have to look back and forth to make sure I'm not like losing sight and I'm gonna bump into something. Surprise, this is my dad and look at his face. This is the most stimulation he's had in five years. All right, that's way too much. I'm running out of excuses to tell people no because it's really straightforward how to fly this thing and a small crash isn't a big deal. Congratulations, dads and uncles. You're now allowed to try it. Another thing is that from that person's perspective, they thought that the Mavic would be acting the way this drone is acting. They thought the Mavic would be like, kind of like you're in a, in a headset and you're like flying 500 miles an hour, like swimming through the air like you are with this one. It's not the case. It's a very steady, slow, boring flying and they wouldn't be interested even if I could show them. This is the answer. This is what, the, it's like halfway between a toy. Everybody wants this experience when they imagine a drone. Like you're like a TIE fighter with the goggles on and you swim with the controller, like you lean left and right and like turn corners and stuff. It really is a rush being able to go that fast if you've never had anything like this before as well. I swear I'm not an idiot, but I just could not get sport mode to turn on until today. So yes, there's a sport mode and it's much faster, but if you're in tight quarters, it's very fast and really scary if it's your first time going this fast. Out in an open space, you don't really feel it, but against some trees in a park, yeah, it's super quick. If I had known this the whole time though, my footage probably would be a lot better. So this is again, that's my mistake. Near any structures though, normal mode is probably the speed you want to go. This is kind of made for the person who's videography focused. So I'm new to FPV. I'm not flying racing drones. I'm not a racing drone expert. I have a ton of cinema drones like cameras for photography and video. How quick can you get used to these controls and how good can you get the quality relatively quickly? I'm flying this as much as I can in weeks. So I'm not like an expert who's been doing this for six months, but this is how quickly I'm able to catch on to this. Because of this controller, it pretty much works like any arcade game, the way you would imagine it. There's nothing complicated about this thing. I mean, they've made it as idiot proof as they can. When you're going really fast, I've kind of got into the habit where you're like swimming, you're like leaning down and leaning up. You lean down to aim if it's going up or down. You can go up and then turn at the same time so you're like climbing and, and banking. So again, because of that, you feel like you're flying. It feels like you making those decisions. It feels like I'm a tiny man in my little spaceship flying to go to work at, in a shoebox somewhere. And then with cinema drones, it's like you're looking at a screen and then you're asking the drone to do something for you. The Avada 2 really is just such an easy entry point into this kind of flying. This is my second time flying, my first time trying to fly fast and the only thing I had is a willingness to look stupid and crash if I do. It was a nice surprise as well looking at the footage because what you're seeing when you're flying is very different than what actually comes out. You don't see the stabilized version, you see like the raw version. The connection is really seamless and I was worried about that before I started flying with this. No hiccups at all. After feeling that it instills a lot of confidence in you so now there's nothing really holding me back. At this point I'm really not worried about making any mistakes. I can just cut loose and go get some footage. Anyways, I crashed this thing um, on the top of a mountain and in hindsight, it was my fault because it was behind two mountains and a car and I was kind of like sitting next to a ditch. So when you're new to these drones, just make a mental note of what is an, a no-no zone. Like if you see a building over there and then you see seven more, don't go that way. 
because when you're in the goggles, you're not thinking about that. You're having a good time. So I took off, you know, went chasing pigeons and then when it went behind the mountains, it hit a rock. So my only clue was like the, the last image I had on this drone was this little house in the corner. So I got to go through a neighborhood, hop somebody's fence and go climb up the side of this strangely boulderous mountain made of only rocks. Probably could have been doing this when I was 30, you know, not now that I'm 32, I don't have it in me anymore. <sighs> the top of this. Oh my God, needle in a haystack. I didn't go look at the footage first. I, I went to go find the drone. So it had gotten dark by that point. So I had to go home and then it, the next day I would go get it. But what's really neat though, is that I could just go into find my drone and then it tells you the GPS coordinates of the last place it was recorded. So if I, I wanted to go track down my precise location via GPS, I could do that. I didn't need to though, because I just found it um, using my eyes. A little scuffed, not bad. All in all, okay right near the top. So it was probably returned to home that was making it raise altitude and then it hit a rock. The camera was fine. The drone's a little scuffed, but fine. I know I look exhausted beyond belief. That was just me messing around. <laughs> I'm actually fine. And now I tell everyone that I'm a veteran FPV pilot and I've got tons of crashes under my belt. So 10 out of 10. Couple of questions I had immediately that were concerns. One, uh, I've heard that because it, when you're in the headset, because you are flying the drone, if you crash the drone, you die in real life. Uh, no, so far nothing. Number two question: Can it kill me? It it can't kill me. It can it can't hurt me. It can be very disappointed in me, but it can't like attack me. So worst case, you buy this for your kid and they fly it into the back of their head, but it's it's not that heavy that it's gonna like you know really hurt them. You can do flips and spins. In the app, you have this option to turn on acro mode. You have to use the wheel to select which kind of thing you wanna do, and then it'll give you the option to do it. You can fly, move forward, and then do a front flip, which feels really cool. The downside of this, you can't record while you do it. Maybe it's not able to film at the same time, I don't know, annoying, but I guess if you're doing flips, it's to mess around and have fun. It's not because you're trying to you know, put videos online. But the flips, I mean, just for sheer entertainment, I love the flips. There's this 180 degree drift, which is great if you're like, you're following a car or something, Thing and you want to keep going full speed while facing backwards. World's most flattering angle, no. Does it work? Yes. We're going to try out some of these uh, easy acro shots and see what we can get. First, we're going to try out this slide and see if it does anything for us. I'm pressing the button. I'm just, it's not very clear what, I'm not even sure how this one applies right now. Um, it turns out slide is just an easy way to make it fly back in normal mode because that way you don't have to go switch back out of acro. The 180 drift I know is super cool, so we're going to try and give that one a try. And then there's me. Let's say this cactus is what I want to get. And I kind of flip here and trail over the cactus. It'll stop about here. So it like cushions you really slowly. So it isn't like, it's not like it just keeps going forever and ever, which is cool. I mean, you want to talk about hours and hours and messing around with this thing. It's the flip. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to fly right over my head and do this so you can hear how, whoop, whoa. It is a, uh, you can hear this thing is putting in a lot of work to make this happen. Oh, I like that. The flips are super fun. You can, you can, ah, you can screw around with that for hours and hours. Oh, the front flip is so, oh, oh, oh. oh. Hey, so on the topic, um, if you are clumsy and accidentally got this thing on its back, there's something called turtle mode in the app. You turn this on in the app and it'll fire the propellers on one side so that the drone flips over and then you can take off normally. What a, what a treat that is. What's also super cool is that with this headset, you don't have to take it off if you're screwing around with something like your phone or you're trying to look at this drone. You just double tap on the side of it and it flips it into, picture in picture is what it's called. So you can look at stuff that you're doing. And then when you're done, you just double tap and it'll flip back over. Then you can go back to normal. Okay, getting into the quality of this and the like trying my hardest to get footage I can for this video. There have been a couple of moments learning with this thing where I thought I'd kind of get the hang of it and figure out how this thing worked right away. So the first time I was flying with normal settings, kind of did a whizzy roundabout and I'm like, this is really cool, super fun. Um, that's kind of it though. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know what, cause I'm new to FPV. It, maybe it's the waterfall or a volcano I need to get in there. Then it turns out you have different modes of stabilizing. So there's rock steady and there's horizon steady. Horizon steady wants to keep the horizon level in case you're filming an event or something or there's a crowd. Rock steady just wants to keep the drone the image clear so it can roll left and right it can like wiggle and do one of these but it's going to keep the image as clear as it can and that's its own discrepancy however you can turn both of these off why would you ever want to do that 
Well, you get software called Gyroflow on your computer. This is more work, but it's not that it looks better, but you have way more control. So if you film something and you don't know how close the zoom is going to be on Rocksteady after you film, you just, just, just want you just want manual control over the situation. You can take this into the software and then decide how close or how far away you want to zoom. How much will you compensate the outside edges of the video for the part that it's cropped in to stabilize? How smooth do you need it to look? Do you need it to be like this warped liquidy horizon when you like do a roll or something? or are you okay with there being a little bit of shake if it means that things look better in the end? There's a million options. The point is you can make adjustments and look at them live. So you can do all this very quickly. Rocksteady and Horizon Steady look very good though. So this isn't better. It just gives you more control. So I'm not going to do this every single time. 95% of the time I'm using Rocksteady, but on the ones that I absolutely want to have complete control over, I will use this. The last part of this that I was missing, I think, is there's an option inside the drone at the top you can turn on called head tracking. Turn on head tracking. It's not your first time flying. You just need to figure out how the drone works. But once you get bored with that, after a couple of spins, turn on head tracking. This is what gives you the feeling that you're really living inside. You're the little tiny man on his way to work. This, I think, is the single most impressive thing about using this drone, and it by far has made it the most fun. Now it feels like a VR headset when you put it on and you can separate where the gimbal is facing the camera versus where you're flying. So I can look down at like a lake or something, and then I can look up while I'm falling. Another thing I learned that made me redo a lot. So if you turn the gimbal on the camera all the way up, you can lean the drone forward and you can go a lot faster. My first time using this, I was just like holding down go and I didn't understand why it's like not like the commercials. So the footage you see of people diving down a waterfall into a volcano, stuff like that. I mean, Google Avada, you will see some super cool footage. That is how you get the feeling, the footage of diving and falling it does take some getting used to. So looking around the camera and separating that mentally from where you're flying, it's hard right away. So don't go behind mountains and through trees your first time doing that. So get some practice first. I have got to give a shout out to the headset, not because of whatever the heck everybody else is rating it for. Just talking about adjusting, everything adjusts. So you feel like you're an optometrist, like fixing this to, to each eye. These goggles do sit really close to your eyes though. So you're gonna have to wipe them once in a while after you're flying, but I'd rather have it that way than when they're too far away. The other thing, this is not like um, the way a VR headset is. Every direction you have uh, this whole field of view. This is like sitting in a dark room with a TV that you're sitting really close to, or like watching a movie in a private theater that it's kind of like a windowed view that's in front of you there's also a drape thing that covers your eyes and I wish the quest had this a lot of times there's like light leaking out of the sides but even in daytime with these DJI goggles on it feels very immersive because it's completely dark in there how to get the best quality picture out of this thing so ND filters first of all to get a slow shutter so that the frames blend together and you don't have that harsh jagged super sharp look 2000 shutter speed that's like something that's important to me from video world if you don't believe me Go watch Avengers and then just pause it anywhere that they're fighting. It's going to be blurry. When all those frames blend together, it looks smooth to your eyes though and it's appealing. It looks way more satisfying to watch together. The other thing, they don't have 24 frames a second on this drone as of right now. Maybe they will in firmware updates. I don't know. DJI likes to surprise us with bonus stuff a couple months later. I think it's annoying that 24 frames a second isn't on there, but 30 frames a second is close enough and 60 is I think the most important thing with an action camera. So with 60, you can do slow motion and at 40% speed, that's the way I would use it on a 24 frames per second timeline. If you're doing this for social, by the way, then yeah, 30 or 60 frames a second is just a clearer, better look. It's just Instagram or like TikTok, YouTube, whatever reels, it just looks better and clearer when it's in 30 or 60 frames a second. So there's an option on the Avada 2 for 10 bit D-Log. The picture right now, even in auto is good. It's passable. I mean, I like the way it's coming out. The focus isn't to get the world's richest data and to color grade this thing to the end of time. So I understand that they don't give you a million options, but just to put D log M in there is pretty ambitious knowing that like I'm going to test this thing out right away and see if it's like crap or not. Here's the normal footage. Here is a 10 bit D log with a flatter profile so you can color grade on your computer, which with better hardware should do a better job if the D log works. This sensor to begin with isn't big enough for this to make a massive difference. With me playing around with this and color grading, I really think the only major benefit to this is if you're filming like directly into a sunset and then the normal profile just kind of makes the shadows a little too dark in some spots. Some people like that look, some people don't. So if you want manual control and you want to work more, you can shoot in D-Log M and then just adjust it here however you want. Quality wise though, I mean, it, you can look back and forth. Maybe you could do a better job. I really don't see a big enough difference and I don't think it matters. It's not like you gain like an extra massive color range and like way more dynamic range if you don't shoot in normal profile. 
That was me color grading manually. Then if I use the DJI D-Log LUT, the color's a little wonky, so you have to adjust the hue. It still is almost the exact same thing. You have a little bit more shadow that's less contrasty, but that's it. That's debatable. It's up to you. It, I mean, if you think you could do a better job, maybe you could. So probably sticking to just the default setting of the normal color profile. Talking about the speed, the flips, the immersion, like the different ways you can record in the field of view, stabilizing, it kind of, in a way, is more of the hobbyist drone than like a Mini 4. The Minis kind of take the throne for like, everybody goes to get this drone first to mess around, but the messing around they want to do is probably more along these lines. Great entry point. This fits a need that was like way out of reach for a really long time. It, it, there's something fast or something crazy is going on and you're not this FPV pilot who's had to like do all this crazy stuff and get a million years of experience. It's just kind of out of reach and you have to shrug it off. But now you have the option for the crazy stuff and if it crashes, it's not the end of the world. You will find better footage of this stuff elsewhere. Even in Avada 1, you can look up on YouTube like Avada Reel or something, find super crazy footage. I just don't have time right now to go find every waterfall and, and lava plume on earth. So until I do, this is the footage that I, I've gotten to sample and work with. But look at a bunch of other Avada Reels because it's only going to be much improved from there. So um, this is the end of the video.